recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> at its core, the budget is a statement of Americans' priorities. It says what we as a nation value. After all, the Republican budget cutting promises that preceded and followed the recent midterm elections, we're finally seeing what the Republicans are really about, what they really value. Press releases. Their whole legislative agenda since they gained control of the House has amounted to nothing more than political theater. The Republicans are doing the exact opposite of what they promised. They are offering no transparency and no thoughtful consideration of the budget in the Congress and no job proposals. Instead, they're just offering a radical Republican wish list to appease their base. Sadly, the budget process is going to be just another backroom deal. Mr. Ryan of Wisconsin has been appointed to determine on his own, with no input from the rest of the House, what the budget spending limits will be. If you care about openness and transparency, you're going to be disappointed. The Republicans said everything would be on the table with increased input and debate among the members. Instead, we're going to get a budget number drafted by one member and will be forced to accept it without a vote. If you care about fairness and democracy, you're about to get a very rude awakening. If you care about making smart investments where all Americans can benefit and prosper, you're going to be disappointed. And if you're a faithful deficit hawk who thought a Republican-controlled House would reduce the deficit, you've been hoodwinked. In the run-up to the midterm elections, Republicans promised that if they won the House, they'd cut $100 billion from the budget. They didn't have a plan, but $100 billion sure sounded like a good number. Well, it's now months after the election, and they still don't have a plan, no specifics, no baseline number, and boy, are they running away from that $100 billion commitment as fast as possible. The Republicans do have a list that includes over 100 cuts that completely disregard the economic and social impacts the cuts would have. Mr. Speaker, budgets are about values. They are a moral document. In general, you are either favor making smart investments and helping the less fortunate, so you are smart and compassionate, or you demonize collective government and it's everybody for himself, laissez-faire capitalism. The Republican Study Committee's list of budget cuts shows us which side of the values equation the Republicans are on. They want to preserve hundreds of billions of dollars for corporate tax breaks, but take away student loans from tens of thousands of students. They want to keep building weapons systems that the Pentagon doesn't want, but they cut historic per preservation. They want to encourage the offshoring of jobs and want to cut programs that help our exporters. Mr. Speaker, we're a month into the Republican leadership of this House, and we haven't seen a single move toward creating jobs. We are a month into the Republican leadership of this House, and we don't have a budget number. We haven't had a hearing. We have no budget proposal that can be honestly debated. Cutting the budget is no easy task. And I strongly encourage the Republicans to end the political theater and think about our country's values and priorities when it comes to laying out the budget. Let's have an open, fair, transparent discussion of job creation. The talk of shifting all the costs of Medicaid onto the states is foolish. You know the poor will suffer with that kind of a proposal. So let's work together toward a responsible budget that reflects that we're both smart and compassionate. I yield back the balance of my time.